is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello and welcome back. Part two's first scene takes shape when the priest and the barber visit our hero. They decided to visit him and verify his improvement. They agree not to mention anything related to Don Quixote's chivalric fantasy, which the narrator describes as a still tender wound. They agreed not to touch on any threads related to knight errantry so as not to risk breaking the sutures on his wounds, which were still so fresh. After a description of Don Quixote wearing a bodice, a gillet of green flannel, and a nightcap, a red Toledan bonnet, the narrator indicates that Don Quixote is as dry as ever. He seemed nothing less than a mummy. These colors and this dryness allude to the era's stereotypical image of a crazy man. Due to his initial presentation in part two, Don Quixote still seems insane, yet he receives his friends with very good judgment and many elegant words. Did you know? The origin of Western political philosophy is Plato's Republic, in which the most important metaphor is the cave. After this brief exposition, the political theme erupts in full when the narrator tells us that during their conversation, Barber, Priest, and Hidalgo began to discuss what is known as reason of state. We must remember that political theory since the time of Plato always employs medical discourse. States and leaders are considered as if they were patients and in terms of their relative health. Don Quixote's insanity represents the political state of Habsburg Spain. Also, the explicit reference to reason of state connects the novel to one of the most popular genres of the Renaissance, the princely advice manuals penned by everyone from Machiavelli, Erasmus, and Bodin to Riva de Neira, Mariana, and Hobbes. Cervantes is even more specific. Don Quixote and his friends are profoundly utopian as they discuss different modes of governance. Don Quixote's insanity represents A, the political climate of Spain, B, the metaphysical state of the inn, C, the weather conditions in the Sierra Morena. Correct answer, A, the political climate of Spain. Note also how the verb banishing recalls the exile of the Moriscos, which was justified precisely in terms of reason of state, that is, as a necessary step for the preservation of Spain. Correcting one abuse and condemning another, reforming this custom and banishing that, each of the three became a new legislator, a modern Lycurgus, a latter-day Solon. And they so transformed the Republic that it was as if they had placed it in a forge and removed one different from the original. By describing all three men as classical lawgivers and statesmen, Cervantes mocks the era's overabundance of political pundits, the so-called arbitristas, who proffered reams of ridiculous advice on how to solve Spain's domestic and foreign policy problems. The irony is that although Don Quixote appears to speak with such discretion that his friends, as well as the housekeeper and the niece, think he is cured completely well and with his sanity restored, the truth is that all three men suffer delusions of political grandeur. That's all for now. We'll see you in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.